بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد سلام عليكم ورحمة الله. So inshallah, in today's um, reflections, I want to share with you a passage that Sheikh Abdul Ghaffar recited in the first raqa um, of the last two. Uh, so Sheikh Abdul Ghaffar, he recited verse number 133, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us to rush, to go quickly and to hasten towards, to eagerly run towards the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the maghfirah of Allah and a jannah, paradise, the vastness of which is like the heavens and the earth, which has been prepared for the muttaqeen. This verse, honestly, subhanallah, and this whole passage is an amazing passage. Uh, the context of this is it comes after ayat that are talking about riba. And Imam Razi, one of the scholars of tafsir, he talks about how this was revealed after Uhud as well. So there are many points that you can really relate to when it comes to these ayat. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he starts off by what telling us to rush towards um, rush towards his forgiveness, to rush towards Jannah, i.e. to make an effort, to exert, to not just take things nice and easy. As believers, we're always pushing, we're always striving, we're always trying to get uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. And the forgiveness here, as many of the scholars of tafsir, they said, what is the maghfirah? Or what leads to the maghfirah is the fara'id, is the obligations and good deeds. That we should be striving towards good deeds. We should be striving and rushing towards doing good. Because that's what leads to Allah's forgiveness and that's what leads to Jannah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this Jannah is prepared for who? It's prepared for the muttaqeen. And taqwa as we all know is what? It's um, being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa is where you're mindful of Allah, where you're conscious of Allah, where you're pre protecting yourself from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're protecting yourself from the punishment of Allah by being careful of what you do, watching what you do. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then describes the people of taqwa. He describes the muttaqeen. And he talks about three actions in the next verse that they partook in. These three actions or these three qualities or traits are what were found in the people of taqwa. This is what made them from the muttaqeen. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alladheena yunfiquna fi sarra'i wa darra'. Those who spend in prosperity and adversity. Those who spend when times are good and when times are difficult. And we talked about spending yesterday, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But just reflecting on the last part where Allah says they spend when they're going through difficulty or hardship. You know, spending going through difficulty, giving in the way of Allah when you're struggling yourself is not easy. It's not an easy thing to do. Yes, because your natural inclination is to look after yourself. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the muttaqeen are those who spend even when they are going through difficulty themselves. And this of course is a way of the companions. The Ansar, the people of Medina, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about them? That they would prefer others over themselves even although they were in need. They would put the needs of others before themselves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us here first and foremost that the muttaqeen are those who give in times of ease and in times of difficulty. And like I said, you know, when you give in times of difficulty, when you're in need yourself, but you give that little bit for the sake of Allah, that is heavy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is weighty with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the muttaqeen, yes, they spend in the way of Allah, number Two, well, kalzimin al ghayz that they are those who swallow their anger, they control their anger, they're on top of themselves when they get angry, and you know, kalzimin is 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 you know, and often you'll find it as translated as control, but really it's it's uh, somebody who swallows the anger, keeps that anger down, puts a lid on the anger, um. And you know, when people push you, it's not easy to remain calm. When people push you to the edge, when people are prodding you, um, you want to lash out. Yes? This is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see you swallow your anger. 
where he wants to see you be on top of your emotions. Because getting angry is natural. Okay, getting emotional, getting angry. If somebody slanders you, somebody says something about a family member, um, somebody accuses you, somebody cheats you in a business deal, whatever it may be, naturally you're going to get angry. But this is where you have to control that anger. Yes, you do not let it explode. You do not lash out. Yes, those who suppress their anger when they get angry, they don't allow it to flare up. So you calm yourself down. One of our teachers, he said, it's like, you know, you have a fizzy drink and if you shake the bottle, yeah, and you open it straight away, what happens? And it comes flying out, yes? Um, but if you were to leave that bottle for a few minutes, and then open it, of course, it's not going to come out in the same manner. In the same way, and you calm yourself down, you take a few minutes, you take a step back, you sit down, you say, A'udhu Billah Min Shaitani Rajeem. You try to control yourself. Yes, and this is patience. When the Prophet ﷺ, one day he was passing by a woman at the graveyard and she was crying. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said to her, uh, Isbiri, that be patient. And what did she say to the Prophet ﷺ? She said, lam musibati, That you've not been afflicted with the way I've been afflicted, the, the, the calamity that I'm going through. She didn't realize it was the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ went, and you look at the humility of the Prophet ﷺ. He didn't say, How dare you speak to me? like that. The Prophet ﷺ realized her situation and he went. Later she was told that that was the Rasul ﷺ. So she went to the Prophet ﷺ to apologize. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, sabru in the sadmatil ula. That patience is when the calamity first strikes. That's when, when you need to be patient. Yes, afterwards it's so easy to say, okay, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said X, Y, and Z. No, patience is when the calamity first strikes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who swallow their anger, that's the second thing. And then he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, nas, those who pardon and forgive. And that's not an easy thing to do. If somebody's wronged you, somebody's accused you of something or said something to you or wronged you in any way, to forgive them is not easy. Yes, but here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this is from the traits of the muttaqeen. To forgive. Yes, for the one who's seeking that forgiveness, for the one who's looking for you to forgive them and asking for your forgiveness, the best thing you can do is forgive. Yes, the best thing you can do is forgive. And Allah says, Afina. Afina is different from just normal forgiveness. It's like you, you completely erase it. It's no longer there. Yes, it's like it's, it never existed. That's afu. When we say, Allah, mainnaka afu, wa tuhibbu al-afu wa fa'fu anna. Oh Allah, you are the one who loves to pardon. I.e. pardon and erase and as if the sin was never even committed. Yes, this is what we're saying. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the one who forgives in such a manner where they pretend as if or they, they feel as if that, that, that sin was never even committed against them. That wrong was never even committed. So they forgive. And of course, when it comes to forgiveness, we all know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Quran, um, that forgive, pardon, let things go. That would you not like Allah to forgive you? Every single one of us has our own mistakes. Every single one of us has fallen into sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, forgive others. Because you would like for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. The ayah then, ayat go on. And what's amazing, and I'll, I'll end on this, the next part, is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ وَمَنْ يَغْفِرُوا ذُنُوبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَمْ يُصِرُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, He's still talking about these people. And this part honestly is amazing. Yeah, Allah is still talking about these people of, of taqwa, these people who have Jannah prepared for them. He says those who, when they commit an evil deed, when they fall into a fahisha, when they fall into something indecent, evil, shamelessness, or they wrong themselves by committing a sin. Yes, then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? They remember Allah and they seek His forgiveness. Yes, and they seek his forgiveness. Who forgives sins except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And they not, do not persist in it. The, so when you think about the people of taqwa, we think there's got to be some type of angel to get into Jannah, the people of taqwa. Allah is saying, no, the people of taqwa are also those who fall into sin, who make mistakes, you and I. We, we fall into sin, we make mistakes, we, we do wrong. But do we then turn back to Allah? Do we then mention Allah and seek Allah's forgiveness? This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see from us. That when we make 
make mistakes, we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single one of us will fall into some sin or another. But don't be arrogant where you don't think anything of the sin. And we might be disobeying Allah in our different ways. Never ever just, just dismiss it like it's nothing. And as one of the, the, the scholars, they said, don't look at the size of the sin. Look at the greatness of the one who you've disobeyed. Don't think of anything as minor. Don't play it down. Rather, if you commit a sin, seek Allah's forgiveness. Ask Allah, oh Allah, I've, 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 I've slipped up. I shouldn't have done that. And the trick of shaitan is what? Shaitan will come to you and say, you've done X, Y, and Z. You watched that haram. You spoke about this person. How can you go to the masjid? How can you pray? This is what shaitan wants. He doesn't want you to fall into this ayah where you remember Allah after doing the wrong and then seek his forgiveness. But that's the way of the believers. And then Allah ends and tells us what? That their reward is forgiveness from their Lord and jannat. Gardens under which rivers flow. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes us from the muttaqeen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes us from those who are close to him. Wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.